Hey, hey there, YouTubers! I'm back for another episode of my game reviews. Today, I shall be reviewing Monster Hunter Try. Ah, yes. Unique gameplay, huge environments to explore, really difficult missions, customization, and a whole mess of monsters. If you're into stuff like this, then Monster Hunter Try is for you. For those who played the other games before, you will find that this game has a lot of the elements from the old ones. And it also has a bunch of new ones. One new thing is that they now have a system to where you can swim underwater and fight enemies underwater. Fishing has also changed a little bit differently, too, with the way, <laughs> the way you do it underwater as well. And uh, now there's also new behaviors for the monsters. Of course, uh, I won't get into too much detail about that. You'll probably have to see for yourselves. By Monster Hunter tradition, the story is quite simple. The story of Monster Hunter Tri takes place in a small fishing village off the coast of an island. The village is called Moga Village, of course. And uh, the people there are fishing, and all of a sudden, they get hit by an earthquake from some sort of monster that's swimming nearby. What they uh, do to get rid of the monster is that they decide to hire a hunter, which is the player. And that's it. Sure, there's a, a little bit of more story involving you trying to help the village get back to normal and uh, fixing everything before fighting off the sea monster and uh, this other stuff. But, uh, yeah, story the story is not really that important with the Monster Hunter series, so... Yeah. But what is really important is the gameplay experience itself. Now the game starts you off with character customization. This is where you make the character look like the way you want him or her to look like. Will they be male or female? Will they um, have a crazy hairstyle or a normal one? Will they look like an old man or someone who's still still pretty young? And uh, after you're done customizing your character and uh, choosing a name for them, you get to choose between two modes. One mode is the village mode. That's with the story and all the one-player missions. And the only partner you get to take along with you on the one-player missions is this uh, little uh, NPC called Chacha. He's a uh, creature known as a Shakalaka. He uh, helps you with the missions, and according to the story, he decides to join you because he's angry at you for killing all the hunts for him, and he decides to make you his so-called minion to work with him. Village mode is basically a warm-up to where you can uh, prepare yourself for the real big game hunts sometime in the future. This is also good practice for when you're getting ready to go onto the online features, which I'll get onto right about now. City mode, or online mode, is where you get to meet up with three other players. There you get to chat with them, hang out with them, and go on missions together. Up to uh, four players can come together within the online missions, and usually this is a good idea to do because some of the missions are so hard that they can't even be done without a whole entire team together. And only a few monsters can be accessed in the uh, online mode as well. And then there's the missions. Now, the missions are very hard, which is, of course, also by Monster Hunter tradition. And uh, the best thing about the missions being hard is that it feels more rewarding when you finish them. And the best thing about the rewards is that you can collect pieces from the monsters you kill and collect money from the missions as well. You use the pieces of the monsters you kill to use it to make stuff like new weapons, new armor. You can also use it to upgrade weapons and armor. And it can really lead to many great combinations of the way your character can look or how strong he or she gets. One must also be aware of the fighting system within this game. Of course, it uh, differs whether or not you use the Wii mode or the uh, classic controller. Some people say it's easier to use the Wii mode, others say it would be for the classic controller. Eh, personally, I don't care which one I would use. 
some people would just uh, stick with the uh, classical controller because it would make that make it feel more like they're playing the original games than before. Now, uh, while you're fighting, you can uh, choose many different weapons to uh, use against the monsters. Personally, right now, I'm using the uh, sword and shield. Now, the advantage of using the sword and shield is that, sure, it may not be the strongest weapon, but it is the most basic and among some of the most easier to use. It uh, comes with, since it comes with a shield, it can uh, be very good to keep around because it builds up defense against the enemies. And um, so uh, if an enemy is attacking you, you can use the shield to block the attack. Sure, you may get knocked back a little bit, but it, uh, but it really reduces the damage quite a, quite a lot. And uh, yeah, the only disadvantage is that uh, at times it can be hard to control. Like, you can't control when the uh, character using the sword is using the big slash. You can... Uh, have a hard time with uh, slicing certain enemies with the certain range the sword has. And uh, the sword itself isn't all that sharp, not to mention that you lose uh, stamina while you're being hit by the shield. Oh, and before I forget, the uh, really big advantage of using the sword and shield is that you can use items while the weapon is still out, so you don't have to waste your time putting it away. Other weapons can be acquired in the game as well, like bow guns, long swords, great swords, lances, and the uh, new invention within the Monster Hunter series, the Switch Axe. But uh, I'm not entirely sure of their advantages or disadvantages because I haven't tested them out yet. I'm uh, sure you'll be able to find them for yourself when you play, or if you do play at all. Another thing for me to mention within the game is uh, something that has been in a lot of the games of the series, which is item combination. Item combination is where you take items that you've harvested out into the field and combine them together to make even better items. Now, uh, this can be really great to have around because uh, you never know what you might get unless you already combined stuff before. My uh, suggestion and for first-time combiners is to combine herbs with blue mushrooms. Those always give you potions. And uh, be sure to mix honey with the potions to make mega potions. Those are good, too. There's also a guy in the city called the Combinator. He uh, combines stuff for you, and he makes sure that they combine 100%, because if you do st stuff this stuff yourself, occasionally you'll end up with just garbage. Now, before this video ends, I'll... Uh, Note a few uh, mon types of monsters that you will find out in the field. The most common being the wyverns. And uh, one of the wyverns would be the uh, bird wyverns. Now, bird wyverns are reptilian monsters that either resemble birds or small theropod dinosaurs. You know, something like velociraptors or stuff like that. Now, the first bird wyvern you experience is a small theropod-like monster called the jaggy. Now, uh, jaggies may seem playful and curious at first, but when, in a, when they're in a group, they can be annoying, and they can really take down your health a lot when you're a beginner. My suggestion with these guys is to either bring a torch or fire-based weaponry. These guys are afraid of fire. Seriously. I mean, every single time when I have a mess, when I'm in a mission involving with the, involving them, I have to bring a torch. And every single time when I have a torch around them, they're just looking at me. They come up to me, they just jump backwards, and they just don't want to get too close. But they do want to get close, but I'm sh they just act like they don't want to at the same time. <laughs> it's kind of uh, funny to watch. And it also makes things easier for me to kill them whenever there's missions for me to get rid of them. I'm sure there are other monsters that are afraid of fire as well, but uh, you'll have to discover that for yourself by experimentation to see how they behave around certain conditions around you. And that's just about it. And uh, the only con I found with this game is that sometimes on the online missions it sort of glitches to where it doesn't really uh, confirm you finishing the mission, but it's nothing too serious. And so I'll give this game a 4.8 out of 5. So. Uh, Thank you all for watching, and uh, good luck th out there, and happy hunting.